So we've got all the pieces laid out here, um, most of them corresponding with the, the velvet that would be going on them. Uh, I'm not going to be gluing in this video because the video would take too long, but we do recommend gluing uh, using a wood glue. Um, and while I'm going through it, I'll try to let you know which, which portions we would recommend gluing. It's not like the majority of our sets where we pretty much glue everything because you don't really want to get the glue on the acrylic. Um, everything's captured when you assemble it, so it's, it's not necessary in every interface, but it is nice in um, a lot of the wood-to-wood -wood joints here. So the first things that we're going to do is uh, assemble the subassembly deflector walls here, and then we're going to be putting the velvet on some of the other deflectors. Um, I've got it laid out here right now so you can see both these two more complicated deflector walls that have these other pieces that assemble with them um, are the same orientation. We want to make sure that the little deflector ramps here um, correspond with these slots. So you want to have the one that's more left on the top in this view, or I guess in the bottom on the way that's shown on the camera there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to insert this one in from the bottom. And you can glue these together if you want to. It's, it's all captured at the end, but it helps to glue sometimes. And then we're gonna put the other one right like this. And you can see that that then will line up with the slots in the velvet. So this is the way that you wanna build both of them. And then we're gonna take this piece here, this is a support piece. It's gonna come in from the bottom comes in right like this. And just kind of wiggle it around and pop that into place. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other assembly. It's the exact same pieces, same setup. When we put it into the full tower, we're gonna to rotate it around so it'll be opposite, but for now it's gonna look exactly the same. So we're gonna pop this one in. Just like that. Put the more middle one right there. And put the support piece in. Just like that. So again, the two pieces are identical. And then we're gonna put the velvet on. So for this, just basically get the corner. And once you peel it up, the backing and you're just going to want to basically center that on that and kind of line it up before you push it down too hard because the adhesive is pretty good and will stay put once you get it on there but you got lined up to smooth it out make sure it's sticking in all the all the surfaces there do the same thing with the other one And the velvet's laser cut, it's the same pattern as the, uh, the, the wood pieces, so it should be a perfect fit. Once we got those two assemblies, we're going to put the velvet on all the other pieces except for the main bottom piece here for the tray. We'll do that once we get one of the side pieces on it. Let's start with this guy next. This is one of the, uh, the bottom kick-out deflectors. Basically, this piece goes right on top of this, and it's just a, an exact fit, um, except for the little uh, tabs. Just like that. And then this piece interfaces with this one, like this in the actual tower. And goes with this piece. So this one doesn't cover the whole thing, because th this portion back here is hidden inside of the tower. So you basically put this piece on just like that. So we're gonna peel that one and stick it on there. Okay, just like that. And then we got these other two deflector walls that don't have the little uh, deflector ramp things on them. So I'm 
bone. Yeah, these two are, it's symmetrical on each side, so it really doesn't matter if you do the bottom top, which way it's going, it'll, it'll still assemble properly. Just, if you're putting the velvet on, a lot of the time we'll pick the, uh, the nicer surface to have exposed, but if you're sanding, it'll, it'll turn out good anyway. Same thing with the smaller one here. Just kind of line it up on an edge. And work the way down. Okay, so that's all the velvet pieces on. So next thing we're going to do is start with the back piece of the tower, and we've got the two side pieces of the tower here. Now with the the smaller tower, it didn't really make any difference because it was all symmetrical. With the larger table size tower, the deflector ramps are coming down in a more kind of pinball pattern here that you need to make sure you have the corresponding side with the appropriate ramp position. So when we put these guys in, this is gonna go in just like this, and you need to have these two notches line up with that position. Same thing on the other side, you have the lower ramp, and those two notches need to line up. So this is the orientation that you want the pieces in where these would fold up. Um, it was cut with this at the top and you can sort of see little laser marks on some of the spots. You want that facing up when you do it. Um, the acrylic will correspond with this one. It's going to basically fit like this. So regardless of whether you got an etch or not on it, we've peeled one side to help identify which side is supposed to go on the inside of the tower. So the etch, if you have an etch, would go inside of the tower. So you get the, the reverse look and it looks a lot cleaner from the outside. But you want the tabs to all line up like this. So when we put it together, the tower goes like this, the acrylic goes like this, and we'll put this one on a later step, but that's just the orientation it's gonna go in. So first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna start assembling the little deflector walls into this back plate. So again, this is the orientation we want. So, the two that have the deflector ramps on them are gonna have the little notches down here. So these are ones you could glue on the back side here. You're not gonna glue the other side though because the acrylic's gonna be locking it in. You don't want the glue squeezing out all over the acrylic. But basically, this goes in like that. This one does the same thing on the lower section. Just like that. And you got the longer plane wall so it's going to go right here, and then the shorter plane wall right into there. So at this point, we can start doing our acrylic. So we're going to take an edge here, and start peeling that down. You should have a really clean surface since left the backing on it. I'll protect it during shipping. But sometimes these things can be a little finicky getting them started. There we go. Okay. So again, this is gonna line up the notches go on the top with these notches here. And you're gonna line it up where the etch is on the inside if you have it. Otherwise, it's gonna look just like this. And it's a little bit hard to see that probably in the camera, but these notches are gonna line up with the notches and the deflector walls. And we're just gonna be very careful when we start pushing these in because you don't wanna crack the acrylic. But just line it up and kind of work your way down. You can you get a little bit of wiggle in the deflector walls as you go. Anywhere you're pushing on it, just try to put pressure right next to those deflector, the little deflector wall tabs. So squeeze this all together, we're not cracking anything. You got good support on all the pieces. Yeah, so 
just like that. And now we can take the first of our side walls and it doesn't really matter which one. I'm gonna turn this on its side. And again, these notches have to line up with these notches and you want the acrylic going into the slots. So this is one where you could do the glue in these valleys back here. And maybe even on the deflector walls, you'd need to get in with Q-tip because you will be able to see in there if any glue squishes out because of the acrylic on the front. But essentially, we're just gonna line this up just like this. And you wanna be careful on this stuff. You don't wanna just smash it in there because you don't wanna pop up any of the wood, but just kind of slowly work your way down and put pressure on the tabs here as you go along. Just do each one almost individually here. As long as you get everything nice and tight when you're doing the assemblies, it, it should all drop pretty well together. Just like that. So the next one is gonna be a little bit trickier because we gotta start putting these, uh, the, the other pieces in here before we put the, the final side wall on. So we're gonna start with these two deflector walls here. And this is where, because this wall here has uh, the extended tang, or the little tab that sticks out, these are gonna uh, interface with the pivot discs here. So when you push this in, it's gonna stick past this floor here. So it sometimes helps if we like borrow some of these other pieces and kind of use them as a standoff platform when we're assembling this. So we can go just like that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take these two pieces and these two nest in together like this. And we're gonna drop these in and then go into these three slots right here. And this is one where you could use glue on it, but you gotta be careful. You don't wanna get in on the, on the velvet. And just pushes in just like that. Now we have these pieces here. So this is a support piece that helps keep everything rigid. There's two pieces that are very similar we're gonna to wanna to use the shorter one for the tower. The longer one is gonna use for the, uh, the, the tray portion later on. So, a little bit of glue on this here. I'm gonna pop this in right here, just like that. And you'll be careful not to put too much glue, so if you are using a support piece underneath, it's not squeegeeing out and making that have a glue spot on it. So we're gonna take our other side piece here. And like I said, this one's a little bit trickier because we got to line up these other pieces, but we're going to start basically the same way. We're going to come right here. You just kind of work your way down. And as you get towards the bottom section here, you can start to wiggle these other pieces and get them to line up. You don't want to start pushing until they've really lined up. And this is probably the trickiest part of the whole build. Once you get it all lined up, you can start squeezing it together. Again, whenever you're pushing on it, try to keep finger support next to the tabs so you're not splintering out the wood or anything. Get everything nice and tight. Again, that was, if you're assembling it just like the other side, probably put some glue on this back strip here. And then these, these interfaces down here, but just be careful not to get it out on the acrylic. You don't really want it on this side because you don't want it squeegeeing into the, uh, or the, the velvet down here. You don't want it squeegeeing into the acrylic on these ones. So don't recommend putting it on this. You don't really need to because it's fully captured. Okay. So once we got that, we'll continue using our little, our other pieces here as support standoffs just so you got this little tank sticking out. Otherwise, you're going to have be pushing on that when you're trying to assemble additional stuff here. So next piece to put on is our little, uh, the, the pivot discs here. So first we're gonna have to put in this uh, extra peg. So this is one where we wanna put a little bit of glue on this guy. We're just gonna stick it in just like that. And we're gonna put some glue on this or on the bottom of this piece and drop it in just like so. Just get it lined up, pop it on there. And we're going to flip the piece over and do the same thing on the other side. So we got a little peg piece, 
glue that one in there right there. And the other uh, pivot disc, glue that one right onto there like that. And you want to clean up any glue that's squeegeeing around the side if you're doing that, just so it doesn't get in the, uh, the pivot interface there. And then the last step for the actual tower portion is the top. So we put a little bit of glue in these valleys around the top here. Wouldn't do it on the front because you don't want me squishing out into the acrylic pan. And I find it helps if a lot of the time, so that the piece that was up, the way that the laser cuts, you got a slight angle to the curve here. And it's a little bit easier to assemble a lot of time if you put the, the burn marks into the assembly. So it's very, very faint burn marks, but you can kind of make it out here. And visually, you can kind of tell which side was, was the bit that was cutting through. It's, it's a little bit tighter on the bottom side. So when you flip it up like this, you put that inboard here, it, it's going to go together a little bit easier. And again, just work your way around. It's a somewhat thin wall here. It, it's, it's strong, but if you're really bearing up on it, you could crack it. So just want to work your way around slow. And it looks just like that. So next we're going to do the tray, and the first pieces we're going to do on this is we're going to take the bottom piece here, and we're going to take this, uh, this is actually the front wall where it kicks out. I'm going to put a little glue in the valleys on this one, I'll pop that right on in. And you sometimes hear a little bit of clicking as you're popping stuff together. That's okay as long as you got it lined up and you're putting pressure supporting the tabs as you're putting it in. Just like that. And then we're going to take one of the side walls of the tray. The little SPG logo goes on the outside. We're going to glue in all the valleys here on this one. We'll take this. And this little slot right here interfaces with that, that front wall. So just line that up and then just kind of work your way down, popping it down. Just like that. So the next step is where I would recommend putting in the velvet. So the way we do this is you get it started right here and just kind of work your way down. This is the way that I found it's the easiest at least. And then you can take a tool of some sort, I'll probably use a knife, um, and just go along this edge here, kind of get a little bit of a crease, and crease it down to it so that the velvet lines up with this top wall here. There's a little bit of a radius in there, so you're gonna have to kind of push it in to get it to line up properly. that lined up on that bottom edge. And we're just gonna slowly work our way down, making sure it stays lined up the whole time. You don't want sticking out too far on the other side. You want that right flush with the uh, the, the valley edge there. And get that right into here. Like I said, you can use a tool, a screwdriver or a knife blade or something like that. Get in here and just kind of crease it in gently. You don't want to cut it, just push it into that corner slot there. If you do it even, then that's going to line up real nice along that edge there. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this back support piece. This is the longer one again. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this guy. I'm going to pop that in right here. And now we're ready to drop the actual tower into the base tray. So the pivot disc lines up with this board here. Obviously the, the front face is with the, uh, the tower, or the, the tray velvet. So I kind of drop this in so that lines up. You can't really see it that well from this side. So there you go, wiggle around, there we go. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue in all these valleys along this edge here. And we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. It kind of helps to start down at the end here. Just get it lined up. Just get it lined up. Just kind of zipper it all the way down. 
And as you get closer to this side, there's a little bit of flex in the part so you, you get some wiggle room. You wanna make sure that this disc is lined up in the bore and that this slot is lined up with this support piece back here. Everything nice and tight. And we're done. That's closed, opens up, locks out, and that's the tower.